I'm Sean McLaughlin, CEO of Airframes Alaska, and I'm here with Gabriel, and we're going to talk about titanium gear. Hi, Sean McLaughlin here, CEO of Airframes Alaska, and I'm here with Gabriel. And Gabriel, pronounce your last name for me again. Kazachik. Kazachik. Did I say it right? Yep. He's the uh, manager of our fabrication department here in Palmer, Alaska. And we're here to talk to you about our new STC, the titanium gear, and explain to you how we came to the gear we came, as well as how we're going to be manufacturing it for you guys. So behind Gabriel here, you'll see the bubble. One of the first things you have to do when you're approving something like a titanium gear for a cub is you have to prove out that you can actually weld titanium in a repeatable, safe, proper fashion. And that was a big part of this, is making sure that our whole process uh, was repeatable and verifiable by the FAA. So Gabriel, tell us what we're looking at here and talk a little bit about the place we're in. So we have a bubble here. The, the atmosphere inside of this is basically 100% argon um, because the titanium reacts with oxygen and um, hydrogen and makes it brittle if it's not if it's not shielded from that atmosphere. So we made a special jig out of sta stainless steel um, that it, can rotate and... And we had to use stainless steel, right? Because that could react as well, yep, right? Yep. Okay. So yes, anything that goes in here has to be um, of a certain kind that it won't react or off gas in the chamber. So we made the jig out of stainless. That's good. And Gabriel, and, so the welders, like this, right? Yeah. So that means this jig has to be able to be moved around and things from inside. Is that right? Is that yep. why it's on wheels and things? Yeah. So we made it rotate in many directions. So it's easy to get to the spot that you're welding and make it as, as comfortable as possible, but it's still, still not still pretty hard to get, <laughs> okay. get to where you're trying to weld. And you have to have everything in the bubble before you start, right? You can't pass or you can, you pass things in and out you or can. you can, it's, you, we have a little tube here that, you purge, you put the parts in there, purge right it out, okay. open up a second gate, and then the parts can go in. Okay. But, but basically you have to have most of what you need in that thing ready to go before you start. And yep. then you kind of move through. Yeah. Okay. And so this is the argon supply here. Yes. And then there's meters here on the table. What do all these meters do? Um, this one tells parts per million of oxygen inside the chamber. It okay. has to be below 40 to 30, 30 to 40 parts per million um, in order to have a good weld. Got it, got it. And what does yeah. this one just tell you, you have enough argon? This one tells us how much argon is left in here. Got it, got it. We can't have it running out. And Maybe then part different. of the thing we had to prove out too in our, our titanium wex belt, uh, weld spec was the cleaning of titanium, right? To make sure that works. Yep. So you go through a ton of cleaning on this stuff as well? Yeah, there's quite a few steps to the process of cleaning it. After it gets coped, we have machine copes, um, it gets deburred, and there's several steps, like I believe at least three different layers of cleaning. When you're all done, you have white cotton gloves on, no even oils from your hands are allowed, and then it gets, it gets passed through the tube into the chamber, and then you're good to weld. So not an easy material to work with? No. Okay. No. Um, even before Gabriel gets it, we also had to build a supply chain for the right titanium that we needed to build this gear, making sure that we're getting it from manufacturers that could vouch for its, what the alloy that we're using, mm -hmm. its provenance and where the materials came from. So we had to build that supply chain. And then we even had to prove out that supply chain was actually working to make sure we were getting the grade of titanium we expected to get. So all of that had to happen sort of as a baseline to even start building this gear. Um, from there, we had to then go into a whole engineering side and Gabriel's team would then be sent drawings from our engineering staff and they'd build up gear. And we have a couple here from the testing here, like here, Gabriel, take that one. A lot of them we were testing, um, testing things to destruction, like this was a set of gear. We were also testing things to make sure the weld process was right. So like Gabriel, didn't we like cut some of these and look at the insides of welds and things yeah, like that? I believe that? one of these was the first one we did. It failed uh, because, because the weld wasn't purged on the backside of the tube. And it just caused a little crack that after, I don't know, like 400 landings or something, it, it right. started cracking. So Right. Gabriel's 
that one was cut apart. I think that's sure. the one that broke. And this, this one, one we checked to see, you know, if the same thing happened in this one. So we've gone through many iterations of this gear and we've gone through hundreds, if not thousands of landings on this gear during the process. And all of that has resulted in changes to the design over time. Like you'll notice in some of this original gear, we have this cross bracing. Titanium is a springier metal. And that springier part of it um, was dampening against other things like the shocks on the gear and the tire. So we didn't want as much spring in it. So some of this was here was for reinforcement and some of it was to limit the amount of spring in the gear. You can see we did that here too. And then we also had things, we originally started the design to be very similar to the design uh, of steel gear. We then realized that was not the right approach. And there were a lot of things that are done on steel gear that are part of the kind of the history of where steel, steel, gear, steel gear started and how it evolved over time. And then there was also things that just had to be different because of the way titanium behaves. And ultimately, like one of the key things that happened in our new design, do we have some of the new gear here? You want to go grab one? Yeah. One of the things that did happen is that we ended up trying all sorts of reinforcements for it. We then ended up pulling all of these reinforcements back out and just beefing up uh, the tubes that we use in the overall gear. We found that at the end, well, that's pretty. So that's, that's, that's production, right? Yep. So this is, um, we ended up beefing up these tubes uh, because we found that that was a better approach than the original approach of just sort of reinforcing tubes that were of a similar size. Um, in addition, we did a different welding assembly on the ends here because we're trying to optimize the titanium welding approach. So the old gear, for instance, had these straps on there for further reinforcement. We, in our testing, we found that those were not necessary. And so we ended up with this nicer machine end on here. Anything else I didn't bring up on that that we changed? Nope, it's all pretty much the same other than the two, those two, the two fittings. And then in our production gear, a couple other things. So there is a, an aluminum step uh, here. Why don't you grab that, Gabriel? So there's a new aluminum step. We did some testing on this. We were able to pull out some more material on the aluminum step, add a couple of bling designs to it. This, this is the aluminum step that goes with titanium gear and all titanium gear comes with, um, what do you call them, Gabriel? Those... The, the step mounts? Yeah, the step mounts. The, so the step mounts that are welded on on the titanium to put this on there. We're not including a fuel step option for the other side at this point. And of course, all welding on this gear has to happen inside there. So it has to come from the factory uh, with all the weld, weldments done on it. The other thing is that we opted through the testing to stick to an inch and a half axle on the gear. And that was again, to simplify supply chain, production, jig making, FAA approval. This is the new one. This the, yeah, this yeah. is the new one. So we, we just went through steps to basically get all of that as streamlined as possible. And one of the things that we decided to do is go to an inch and a half, which is the majority of the gear uh, we're selling now. The actual gear that came out, pretty cool. It's got, the tubes are a little beefier than the original one, which looks kind of really neat with a 35 inch set of bush wheels on it. It just kind of fits. It just has that look that uh, tells you it's ready for action. So I'm pretty excited with how it came about. Um, a couple other things here. Um, we've, uh, the whole gear, uh, the whole point of this is saving weight, like everything we've done in titanium. We started making smaller parts in titanium. We've been learning. We went to the tail spring and then we went to this. Um, the whole thing, if you replace your gear with titanium, you save seven and a half pounds. Uh, and that's including the step change as well from standard gear. So Gabriel, anything else that I uh, haven't included here that you'd add? Um, well, we, we're also working on titanium cabane Vs. Right, right. Um, that's part of the kit. Part of the weight savings is the titanium cabane. What else, Gabriel? What else would you weld out of titanium? Are you ready to do more of these things? Heck yeah. Okay, which ones do you want to do next? Uh, we could do seat bases or uh, your, even the, the upper part of the seat. We could do- You have to save a lot of weight there. Yeah. Torque tubes, I know people have asked about the torque tube. Yep. What else, anything else? Uh, brake pedals, brake. rudder pedals. Wherever we can pull it out, Yeah. right? So we're gonna probably be, you know, this is the beginning of a journey for us in terms of trying to continue to take weight out of the aircraft. Oh, and Gabriel, talk about these, these things you brought along here. What are we looking at there? So, these are different finish designs that we've been playing around with, possible things to do. Uh, in addition to just the finish you see here, we could also incorporate some logos or uh, brand name. Got it. Or things like that. So yeah, so good point, Maybe Gabriel. So um, 
expect some extra bling also to be added to these by the time they we start shipping. They're looking at some designs to basically, and what it is, is, is how do they do this? Is this sandblasting or what is this? Bead, bead blasting. Bead blasting? Yep. So they bead blast it to a, a matte finish and then they've got some shiny parts. There's gonna be some cool things happening with the gear just to add another little level of coolness to it. That's a good point, Gabriel. Are you gonna do that here or is that being outsourced? We're doing that here. You're doing that here? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, Gabriel. We hope you're as excited about the titanium gear as we are. Come by one of our showrooms here in Alaska to see it or visit our website for more information about it. And again, safe flying out there.